let's look at how to take higher derivatives. So we've learned how to find f prime, or the first derivative of f of x, but what if we have to find f double prime or f triple prime? Simple. Just take the derivative multiple times in a row. Let's look at a quick example. Find the fourth derivative of cosine of x. Well, the first derivative is negative sine of x. Now we know we have to take the derivative again. The derivative of sine of x would be cosine of x, but we actually have negative sine of x, so it's going to be negative cosine of x. That gives us the second derivative. Now we derive it again. The derivative of cosine would be negative sine, but we have a negative cosine, so now it's negative sine times negative 1, or just regular sine. Then we have to take the derivative one more time. Derivative of sine is cosine, and we'll have our answer. Now, the only time this gets a little tricky is if we're asked to find a formula for the nth derivative. So there are going to be some functions where if you keep deriving them over and over, you'll notice a pattern. So let's do an example and then figure out the steps. Find a formula for the nth derivative of x times e to the negative x. So usually I take the derivative about three times to make sure I'm seeing the formula. I use the product rule for this one, so I got f prime of x equals negative x times e to the negative x plus 1 times e to the negative x. I took the derivative again, and I got x times e to the negative x minus 2 times e to the negative x. And one last time, and I got negative x times e to the negative x plus 3 times e to the negative x. So the first thing I do is I rewrite all three of my derivatives and make sure that I'm ordering my terms consistently. So in this case, the term that has x times e to the negative x is always the first term, and the term that just has e to the negative x times some number is the second term. So I've noticed that there are two terms. There's the x times e to the negative x, which alternates sine every time. So for my first derivative, it's negative. For my second derivative, it's positive. For my third derivative, it's negative. So it's negative on odd derivatives. My second term is e to the negative x. And I notice that this also alternates sine, um, but it's negative on the even derivatives, like the second derivative. And it's also always multiplied by n, or the number of derivative I'm on. So for my second derivative, I had x times e to the negative x minus 2 times e to the negative x. And 2 is the number of derivative I'm on. So now we have to make the formula. So usually what I do is I write f of x equals, and then I write both pieces added together. So I mentioned that there are two pieces, x times e to the negative x and e to the negative x. So I write the formula, which is each of those pieces added together, but then I leave room to multiply those by some coefficients that'll help me really recreate the pattern. The first thing I do is I multiply the x times e to the negative x term by negative 1 raised to the n power. The reason I did this is because this forces this term to be negative on odd number derivatives, which is what the pattern has. Because when negative 1 is raised to an odd power, it'll stay negative 1. But when negative 1 is raised to an even power, it'll be positive. So for my third derivative, for an example, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. So it'll be negative 1 times x times e to the negative x. And we can see that that's what that term looks like for the third derivative. Now, my second term, e to the negative x, is negative only on the even derivatives. So I have to multiply it by negative 1 to the n plus 1. And the reason is because when n is an even number, n plus 1 will be an odd number, and negative 1 to an odd number is negative. But then I also have to multiply e to the negative x by n, the number derivative we're on. Because as I mentioned, when I'm on my second derivative and n equals 2, I can see that e to the negative x has a 2 in front of it. And so that's what that n term is there for. All right, now let's discuss the steps that you can use every time. First, take the derivative three times and simplify each time. Then order the terms consistently so you can see the pattern. Figure out what terms are always in the formula, and then figure out whether they change sign or coefficients. So in the previous example, I saw that there were two terms that were always there, x times e to the negative x and e to the negative x. If one of those terms changes sign, then we have to figure out if it's negative on the odd derivatives or the even derivatives. If it's negative on the odd derivatives, then I'm going to multiply that term by negative 1 to the n. If it's negative on the even derivatives, I'll multiply that term by negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now we have to also look if the coefficient in front of that term changes. 
By coefficient, I mean like a number, like two or three. We want to write the coefficient as a function of the number of derivative, like n, that I'm on. Now we may have to use a factorial, like n factorial, and we'll look at an example of this later on. So here's an example. f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. So I've taken the derivative three times here, and now I'm going to rewrite them just so that I can really see the pattern. And one thing I notice is that the term that's always there is 1 minus x on the denominator. So when I write my formula, I have a blank set of parentheses on the numerator over 1 minus x to some exponent that I also leave blank. Because whatever is changing, I leave it blank. Now, I raise the denominator 1 minus x to the n plus 1 because I notice that the exponent of the denominator was always 1 greater than n, or 1 greater than the number derivative I'm on. So for the second derivative, my exponent was 3. So that's why I'm raising it to the n plus 1. For the numerator, I put down n factorial. And this ensures the correct number was on top. If we look at our third derivative here, the number on top was 6, which happens to be 3 factorial, or 3 times 2 times 1. And this highlights the importance of taking the derivative three times. Because if, if I only took the derivative twice, I would see, okay, the first derivative has 1 on top, the second derivative has 2 on top, so I'm thinking the number on top is always the same as my derivative, so I would just put n on top. But when I take the third derivative, I realize that there's actually a different pattern going on. It's the factorial of n that's on top. So that's why I really recommend taking the derivative three times. So that's about it for writing the formulas. If you just follow the steps, um, I think you'll find it's really not too bad.